Uh, once again, thanks for coming out today, guys. I appreciate your time. Um, the topic today that we're going to be talking, uh, I'm going to be sharing with you, excuse me, is going to be on teen suicide and cyberbullying. What is the relationship between cyberbullying and teen, and teen suicide? Um, so you can give a definition of what cyberbullying is. It's any type of mistreatment, abuse, oppression, or harassment via the internet or the cyber world. Um, if that is Snapchat, Tumblr, Facebook, a text message, or an email, that would be considered cyberbullying. Um, here we are, we work on an adolescent unit. A number of our patients have come here due to cyberbullying or some type of even person-to-person -person bullying at school. Um, but how severe is, 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 does this impact the, the, the victim? Is it something that is isolated and it leads to them becoming suicidal? Or is this something that's happening and they have some other predisposing diagnosis that, um, that is um, leading them to become suicidal and or have any type of suicidal ideation? Um, once again, the synonyms for mistreatment or oppression, harassment, victimization, these are all synonyms for bullying. And we tend to look at bullying as just being a schoolyard problem which it was a generation ago. Now with the internet, um, it has become something that where it's just not an isolated incident where the bully is picking on the student at school. There are a few number of peers to watch and witness this. And then the victim has the opportunity to go home and recover. Now with the internet and technology becoming a part of this um, situation, we have come to realize that um, the, the bullying is, has a long lasting effect and um, the, 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 the bully has a situation where he can become anonymous. And this is some um, information that has been shared with us by Schneider and O'Donnell in 2000, excuse me, 2014. Um, as we move on, if, and, and I look at, uh, we look at uh, the situation in regards to bullying, are there any predisposing factors to this once again, other than just the bullying. And according to Hinduja and Patch in 2010, uh, this is a direct quote, while it is unlikely cyberbullying by itself leads to youth suicide, it may exacerbate instability and hopelessness in adolescents already affected by stressful life circumstances or mental health problems. Once again, Hinduja and Patch in 2010. So basically what this is saying is that, hey, if you have uh, a student patient who is already depressed, he is already being um, a situation where they're not social, they're isolated, and then it turns into a situation of cyberbullying, that this could lead to the patient becoming, um, leading to suicidal ideation and or suicidal behavior. We want to be able to identify at-risk youth of bullying, being able to detect and recover Reflect and recover from bullying, you know, which, which many kids go through. Many kids are bullied. However, many of them are able to recover appropriately from bullying. Why is that? Um, what we know about these about this youth is that they have parental support and school support, and they also have friends and a sense of belonging. On the other side of the coin, you have uh, youth that are involved in substance abuse, violent behavior, uh, dangerous sexual behavior. Um, these are the kids who already have some existing predisposing factors and that uh, if, you, if they become bullied and or cyberbullied, the, the, the proof, uh, the, the research shows that these kids are, are at a higher risk of becoming suicidal. What can we do to prevent this? What can we do to make, make changes to this and to assist? Because now we're in a world where we're not going to just be taken away kids computer we are not going to just take away their cell phone this is the world we live in and at the end of the day it is about parental responsibility and how we're managing this to prevent our children from being harassed mistreated um, and, and oppressed online cell phones tablets computers and internet access require monitoring and appropriate legislation um, there's a long-lasting effect that has been proven based on being bullied and or cyber bullied once again, the cyberbullying doesn't go away. If we have a teenage girl who takes an image of herself um, 
topless, and she sends this to an ex-boyfriend who posts this um, online. It is now something that we have seen go viral, and where the kids come in and they're suicidal based on this uh, situation. Um, Cyberbullying plays a role in circumstance that leads to suicide. Um, however, suicide is based on the thought of the individual as we wrap this up. You know, um, you, you can be bullied, um, you can be cyberbullied, but chances are that there is something else going on in that particular individual's life that led to them having the suicidal ideation and or the suicidal behavior. So we know for a fact that cyberbullying is a component that is a part of suicidal ideation and suicidal behavior, and it is not the say-all, be-all cause of it. Um, to conclude, we just want to monitor, supervise, and uh, make sure that the user is doing the appropriate responsible things with their electronic devices, and um, be aware that that suicidal ideation and suicidal behavior is an individual um, situation and the, and the preceding events that have led to the behavior are um, primary factors that lead to, to suicidal ideation and suicidal behavior. Thank you for your time.